Uh, but the last part I have to make here is by far the most challenging part to make. And uh, in typical Tom Lipton fashion, besides being functional, it's very nice looking. And so it's, there's going to be a fair amount of extra effort to make it look good as well in uh, this part design. Uh, there's a lot of steps in making this. <laughs> Each individual step is simple, but if you get the order wrong, the work holding situation is going to be a real pain. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see what we can do if we can... Uh, if we're up to t the task Tom set before us here. So my first step, I think, is to rough out most of this material here so that I can turn this part round on the end here. Uh, this last one and a half inches, three quarter inch diameter, that's going to be a bit challenging all by itself. Um, so that's going to leave a big square chunk of material down here that I can hold on to in the, in the lathe to turn that, which will be a pretty interrupted cut. So I want to remove most of this material first. So I've got to take a chuck, chunk out of this like here, and I've got to remove the side pieces down to here. It's also, also an awful lot of stick out. I might need to put a center in that uh, as well. Um, we're going to wing this. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I can with it. Uh, but I might very well screw this up because this is a challenging part to make. Uh, I'm sure Tom would uh, see this as very easy. By the way, if you were wondering, here's an example of what I was talking about earlier where Tom follows the rules of the trade, which is never duplicate measurements uh, on a drawing. Uh, so if I was interested, he, his reference is this side, except this is sanded. So... Uh, I wanted to start on this side, use references from this side. So if I want to know the length from here to here, which I don't know, um, it's as simple as subtracting 1.38 from 3. But you notice he wouldn't put it on the drawing because that's a duplication. It's unnecessary information. Now, I usually put on information drawings on the way I want to build it, and maybe he did exactly the same. Uh, so sometimes I will duplicate information. If one operation comes from one side, the other from another side, then I will put measurements both directions just to make it easier for me when I'm doing the part. Uh, but again, uh, don't be surprised if you get a drawing from someone who knows what they're doing and they don't duplicate any distances. Like, he didn't put 1.5 up here because it's down here already. And that would be duplicating information, and that's uh, a big no-no and -no proper uh, following the rule design, uh, drawing design. All righty, well, <laughs> enough stalling. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to this part. All right, so I've done my layout lines here, and uh, this is all material to remove this out here as well. And uh, it shows me roughly where that radius should be. I think a 3 8 inch end mill might be a nice looking radius for this intersection right here. So I've got to remove all this material, but, but actually initially, I'm gonna remove material right down to here and leave this square portion uh, intact so that uh, I can hold this in the lathe to do my offset turning for this guy, for the round portion right here, this guy right here. Um, it's actually, this piece a little bit long in this direction. My reference side is over here, as Tom used that as his reference for his drawing. And so I use the same reference point. And the fact that it's a little long doesn't matter. That just means it sticks farther up the pipe, which is not a problem. Um, so I think I've got my marks from my two 3 8 inch uh, dowel pin holes. Here's the center of the circle. And uh, <clears throat> I think I'm going to use an annular cutter to cut this out when I get there. Uh, and uh, the small annular cutter, well, smaller, 1.5. I have a 1.75 annular cutter. But the problem is that one doesn't, uh, uh, you don't remove all the material. Uh, if you look at a side profile, you see that this top part extends just half an inch up here. And then the bottom part is one inch where the bearing gets press fit. That's a little bit tricky. I've also marked the material that gets removed out of here from the side uh, profile here. And I'm thinking I'm just going to use a, a coarse end mill, uh, a roughing end mill to remove this material. I was going to bandsaw it out. But I think I'll have better luck with this thick of material uh, with the rough end mill. I know that uh, bandsaws are faster, typically, uh, but I'm still a bit of a novice and I tend to not get as straight a cut as I like. So I'm going to use an end mill to do this because uh, I've got better control that way. At least the machine has the uh, built-in hand-eye coordination that I lack. So we're going to head over to the mill and... Uh, rough out this part. So work holding is going to be a challenge no matter what, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the half inch depth of material off of just this section right here. 
if you can see that. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm just going to remove this part first. I'm going to flip it on its side and remove all of this material going back to here on each side. The first side will have, uh, I'll have plenty of gripping. On um, the second side, this part will be protruding out, so there's going to want to be some chatter. So we'll have to play it by ear, see how that works. Maybe we will be back to the bandsaw for the second side. I'm not sure. There's the first part done. Now we got to flip it on its side and remove a bunch more material. This is probably going to get more and more problematic because as I remove more material, there'll be less support. So when I clamp the bottom, there'll be nothing clamping on this section right here, for example. So you can see uh, one of my foops here, and it damaged a little bit of the material I care about. Actually, yeah, a fair amount, unfortunately. Hopefully it doesn't scrap the part. So what happened here was, even though I had a little bit of break on, on both my X and Y axes, and I was holding on the hand wheels, uh, the roughing end mill caught, because I was trying to do a full three quarter inch depth of cut. Um, I wasn't doing that big a bite, but it's actually easier with a big bite than a small bite. Uh, because I was skimming along the outside edge and it just caught and it yanked everything, uh, yanked the table uh, and the, pulled the cutter right into it because it turned it into a climb cut. I wasn't doing a climb cut, so I was, I was, I was going in and then coming back this way, which was a conventional milling. Uh, but uh, yeah, I screwed this up. Uh, all right, so I went over the bandsaw and I removed this material here and realized I just made an order of operations mistake. So when this was all a solid material, removing this material here was a mistake. I should have removed all of this first, then taken this over to the lathe, turned this part round, and then come back and remove this because it would have given me a more stable uh, thing to, to, to grab onto. Now I don't have that, and uh, that was bad. Of course, uh, this was... Uh, definitely bad. Look at the chunks of metal ripped out. It just yanked the table, even though I was holding onto it with friction. Uh, it just shows you if you're an experienced guy like Tom, you probably never would have tried it. Um, this is the lo tough lessons you learn. So uh, we're going to try and turn this in the lathe next, as long as I've got a little bit of extra supporting material here. And then I'll bandsaw this off after this part and this part. I'll bandsaw it off rather than taking the end mill. I thought that was a good idea. Live and learn. All right, so we're going to make this round first because after I remove this material here, it'll be a lot less stable. Um, I, I measured and put a mark in the center. This isn't critical. It's just for where the pipe goes. Actually, none of these measurements are critical other than the center diameter. Uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. And we got in our four jaw chuck and it's off center. And uh, we're just going to turn it. It's going to be an interrupted cut. And we're just going to turn this part round to three quarters. And I think we're going to try 440 RPM. Hopefully that won't be too much. Let's see how stable that is. So I don't know how hard this is for you to see, but uh, I've scribed a line in the dicum and I'm just going to sand up to that line and uh, that will be my part. I probably can take this over to the, uh, the uh, bandsaw and cut these corners off to save myself a lot of sanding time. Uh, but other than that, um, I think we're going to be good. Well, let's try the first assembly. So I got this mostly around. I do not have Tom Lipton's hand with a file. Um, there's definitely some high spots here. I need to scribe another line to get this better. I have terrible hand-eye coordination, so I was not impressed. So this guy fits here, and uh, that's an excellent fit. 
I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Um, the bronze bushing I pressed in, in this case, just using the vise. I didn't even go to the uh, uh, hydraulic press because it really wasn't necessary. And this is kept in place with these three uh, screws, which are just right here. I think the fit's a little close because, yeah, if I tighten this, I need to remove some material off the bottom of this because if you tighten this all the way down, uh, this guy won't move at all. Yeah, locks it in place completely. So I think it needs a little bit of uh, clearance. Not much. It's partially because it uh, presses up against the weld in the top and I got rid of almost all of it but there's still a tiny bit left. So I took my Dakanishi uh, die grinder and uh, took off a little bit of material and I think we're good now. This thing's been really handy. I bought it on eBay used and it was supposed to be in working condition. It wasn't, it didn't work at all. So I had to send it back to the manufacturer and uh, I got my money back on it because it didn't work and they didn't want it back. So when I sent it to the manufacturer, it cost me almost 200 bucks to get it repaired. So, uh, I did have to invest a fair amount in it, but uh, it did end up working. So now we're good. There's enough clearance that when this is tight, it'll still be able to turn. Probably could use a little bit of lubrication too. This is an oil light bearing, so it's pre-lubricated to some degree. Yeah, it still can rotate freely with this tightened all the way down. I think three screws are nice looking, probably not necessary for this application, but I guess I'd, I'll defer to Tom again. Okay, so that's the that's that part, and that's looking really good. I think that's enough range. I might have to in-cut a little bit here at some point if I need to rotate more than I planned. And I guess we'll start with the... Uh, the pin that he prescribed in his drawing. And I'll put both pins in here, although they're probably both not necessary. And when this got hot, it changed the dimensions of these holes a little bit. They were, uh, they were loose before, but uh, I might have to run some sandpaper in there to get these together to go smoothly in and out. Now they used to, they were for a while. Now let's uh, try that. This was my first fit. So I took a drill, took an arbor that split put in my drill motor and uh, cleaned out the hole and uh, took up the uh, couple of tents that was the problem. I also cleaned up a little bit of the weld here. There was just a tiny bit sticking up and it's causing this to stick. So we're good there. So let's put this in. Okay, we're good there. And I don't need the second pin. These are the larger diameter pins. So next up, we just pop this guy in the vise and give it a try. Whoops. <laughs> Forgot one difference. Got to put on my handle or giant lever arm. Now, the problem with my bench is, is that where the vise stands, it's not really attached to much of anything. It's just free floating above the ground. So I'm not quite sure how well this is going to work. I'm going to need a new uh, vise location, I think, before this is over. I thought I'd really give this a guy a go. So we're going to start with uh, something hard uh, like this. So you'd have to preset this guy here. And uh, this is some heavy-duty aluminum welding wire. Oh, and look at that. Just like butter. Boy, that was really easy. This thing's amazing. It took a bit of force, but we got it. All right, all right. We'll, <laughs> we'll try something a little more challenging. <laughs> I actually don't have much in the way of round stock in stock. So also the position of this sets the minimum uh, length you've got to have stick out for the bend. So let's see, are we in frame? Yes, we are. Okay, so how hard is this? Uh, not hard at all. Not hard at all. That's really easy. So let's try a compound bend there. So uh, let's try that. And how about this? So I noticed that I can only, I would love to be able to do 180, although there's probably no way to do 180. Um, 
so that was trivial. That was on some quarter inch stock too. That really was snazzy. Uh, once might be nice to put some marks on here so that you know where your bend's gonna end up and to help you predict where it's going. But uh, I think the bottom line is this thing's a great success uh, in spite of my huge number of errors in this project. This was one of my worst projects. Uh, but I thank Tom Lipton for the idea. Uh, it was really cool and uh, I had a lot of fun making it. I learned a lot. So uh, I think uh, it was a huge plus. I've seen Tom do some 3 8 inch stock. I don't have any 3 8 inch stock. Uh, let me go look. All right, well, I think this is too excessive, but let's see. Mm. No, it's a bit too much for it. I was able to bend it a little bit, but it's gonna, it's gonna damage it. So I think uh, maybe 3 8 and under. Well, half inch was too much. 3 8 is, I've seen Tom do 3 8 with it, so I'm sure it can do that. Uh, you might have to switch to the larger diameter center mandrel like uh, one of these guys. And uh, then maybe, I don't know about this pin on this side, it is hardened. Um, so got some nice options. By the way, this isn't limited to round stock only. You can also do flat stock. This is eighth inch by half inch uh, mild steel stock. And uh, it bends that without any issue whatsoever. Not a problem. So very cool. I want to thank Tom again for the project and I just wanted to thank you all for watching. Hope you had a good time and I hope you learned something from my huge multitude of mistakes I made this time around. Anyway, see you next time.